Thank you very much, um, yeah, Timothy, and, and welcome everybody. Blue Star um, has secured a primary helium play in the United States, and we're delivering high-grade, low-cost helium into the market, um, and into that market, which is the largest market in the world. And I think sort of Tim has, has alluded to that already. Uh, let me just shoot this. Okay, so here's the disclaimer. Look, um, if you guys could read that um, in the release that we made, that would be good. 13.4 um, BCF, I'll draw your attention to that. That's the prospective resource we have for the Lions play at the moment. That's over five of the prospects in the portfolio. So we have, we have others tucked away, um, but that's what we've got so far. But even that is an impressive uh, resource. So why are we the leading helium pure play in our minds? I mean, helium is a critical and highly valued uh, technology enabler. Blue Star has a strategic large US land position. Um, we have a high grade green resource and those resources, like I just mentioned, have been independently certified. Um, we've got a low cost, high impact drilling program coming up. I think that's what the market's getting excited about. And upon success, we have a high return commercialization pathway. So it's an exciting play, being a pure play that allows us to commercialize these things um, with high margin. And we'll talk a bit more about that. So just quickly on the snapshot, um, this is probably the first presentation I've put out a slide, which actually has a share price similar to the day I'm presenting, which is, is, is a new one. Um, we have a clean capital structure, I think a market cap at around 79 million. Uh, we've got cash in the bank, a really supportive shareholder base at the moment. I'll let you read about myself and Ross and um, the other directors and our company SEC um, at your leisure on the website or the Prez. Um, but as Tim alluded to earlier, I think the, um, the share price is, is looking good at the moment. Just want to draw your attention to our strong um, US-based operations team. It's not just us in us here in Perth. We have a great team over there. Paul Jordan is our US director. Kristen Stocks, our operations manager. Crockett and Greg run our minerals leasing and our surface access. Andrea and Kim run all the well permitting. So they're the ones that have been working their asses off at the moment to get things done. And Jackie supports them um, in the environment, health and safety. So. It's worth noting too that, that that key team are people that I've worked with before, people that when I was in the US running an oil and gas operation in the Rocky Mountains, these are the teams that um, I, I left when, I, when we finished up there and we pulled them all back um, for this project. So they're very well known to us. We also have experienced partners and support services. So you'll see there that you know, those, those range of services cover geoscience, commercial disciplines, engineering operations, drilling evaluation, marketing development, wildlife environment, legal. So a huge depth of, of expertise that we draw on. It's, it's really um, quite impressive and it's not just us over here, in, over here in Perth. So we're gonna talk a little bit about helium in the market. There's a lot more in the presentation we've released um, that I'm gonna show here. So if you want more about the thematic, please go there. Um, but helium is a high value commodity with high tech applications. It's experiencing rapid uh, demand growth and emerging supply risks. Um, and it's listed as critical to the economy and the national security in the US. And again, that's the largest market in the world. And that's where we've, we've decided to play. So we believe, and it's at its reference, the, the source reference is down there. By 2025, the market should be about 18.2 billion. Um, that's quite exciting growth. And you'll see that, you know, based on the supply demand. Um, over there, we have our, some of the major helium applications. So still cryogenics and MRI are still at the top of the list, followed by lifting. And then you have the consumer electronics. So the, you know, the semiconductors and the fiber optics, which is, is what everyone's using these days as technology advances. So the market is very diversified, it, it's deep, um, and there's increasing demand again around medical uh, consumer electronics and technological advancement. And I think in the presentation pack we released, we even hint at and show some of the future demand that we think is coming with rocketry and, and other things. So when it comes to price, um, we believe with the research that we've done that, you know, we, we're looking at US, above US 285 per MCF. Now that just happens to be the last, the average price of the last BLM sale. Um, and the research that we've done uh, suggests that the, the market is, is above that. Um, and I've got a slide to sort of talk, talk through that a little bit. But before we leave this one, just look at the, um, you know, the major consumers over there. They're the, they're the blue chip consumers. And there's a bit of an apples and oranges um, comparison here against natural gas in the US. Um, 
really what that really means, you know, is why if you have the skill set to to find natural gas, why wouldn't you, you know, lend that over to helium, which is exactly what we're doing. So just looking at this graph, hopefully you can see my cursor. If not, you'll be able to see the legend anyway. But the BLM historically has kept the, the prices artificially low. Uh, it's supplied lot, a lot of its strategic reserve into the market. That ended in 2018. And then the average sale price at that last sale where all of that reserve that's going to be available was sold ended up being 285. You can see that tube trailer sales um, were always higher in the US. And then in 2019, they jumped up to about $400 an MCF. When you look at international import and export data, um, that you know, supports that trend. So I think we're pretty comfortable saying that we, you know, pricing is around 285 or above. Um, obviously it will change if you get a long-term contract versus um, a direct to, a, to an off taker, or you know, if you get the spot market. Some of our peers have been talking you know, spot prices of, of over a over thousand dollars an MCF. So that's pretty exciting. And the dynamic, the market is changing, I should mention. A lot of long-term contracts are ending. Um, end users are talking a lot more to producers and things like that. So we're, we're right on a really dynamic part of the market. Looking at this, this slide here, um, at your leisure, have a look, because this really represents all, almost all of the helium that's produced in the world. But what I want to just draw your attention to is the fact that most of the helium produced in the world is a byproduct of hydrocarbons, um, with helium being helium being that byproduct. The only different, only one that's on there in grey. So sorry, they're shown there in red. The one in grey is Labarge. That's actually primarily a CO2 field that's been producing CO2 for secondary and tertiary recovery in the US uh, for many years. So obviously, those supplies are going to be quite inelastic. They they need large LNG trains um, as well. Uh, they're inelastic, they can't really respond, and they're going to come under a lot of pressure in this new energy regime. When you look at the blue ones, they're what we call the primary helium or the pure helium plays, and they represent less than 10% of the market, and that's what, that's what Blue Star is chasing. Now, the difference there is they are quite um, elastic. They can react very quickly to price and supply, um, and we can bring on like um, you know, more reserves you know, relatively quickly. We don't have to, it's not on the back of an LNG train or something like that. So. It's an exciting space to be in quickly when we started looking at helium at blue star we quickly realized that's where we want to play it made, it made perfect sense so blue star was a strategic first mover in the los Angeles county in the heart of the biggest helium market the us which we've already mentioned the projects have excellent proximity to infrastructure and uh, major consumers and again we've got a high grade green helium resource so if you look at this map here, where are we located? Um, we're located exactly where these very large yellow dots are. Now this is a helium map of the US and you, what, what it's representing is the larger the circle, the higher the grade of helium and the brighter the circle, the shallower the depth. So I think you can see that we're a bit of a standout where one of the highest grades and one of the shallowest depths. And you'll see that reflected in our well costs. You'll see that reflected in um, our development as well. So the grade and the, and the depth. You know, helps us economically. There's, there's no doubt about that. So looking at our portfolio a little bit more, we have 265,000 or over that gross acres, 189 net acres. Um, that's a huge amount of land. Um, we completely dominate this area, but even our peers, we, we have a lot, a significant amount. And that was a very significant part of the strategy was to grab this land, why it was cheap. We found this area completely unleased. Um, we grabbed as much as we could, and you can see the clusters forming. You can see where our prospects are here, Enterprise and Galileo, and you can see Argo, Galactica, and Pegasus. That's where we've got the resources, but you can see other clusters forming up, and obviously they're over um, prospects that we also like. We just haven't rolled out yet. Um, in, the other interesting thing on this slide is the model dome field. So that's a historic field that produced on average 8% helium, and that's the analog to our proven play. So this area is actually proven as far as a play comes play goes, play elements. Um, government since year true also tested helium at 8.8%. And it's worth noting that both of those are locked in a US military maneuver site. They've actually taken off of the market um, back in the 30s and 40s, and they will never be able to be leased again. So it was one of the areas that this, uh, one of the reasons I believe this area was a bit of a sleeper, a bit of forensic geology to, um, to uncover the sort of hidden gem that we have here. Down south, um, there's also another helium um, test at 2.2% um, in a much deeper reservoir. I, 
um, I shouldn't say much deeper, there's nothing here is that deep. Um, it's, it's twice as deep. Um, and that's the Pennsylvania. So that's a completely separate play where we've already tested um, helium. And we'll talk a little bit about that coming up. So again, we're in a proven play fairway and that's important to remember. So, you know, model dome is the analog, it produced 8% helium. The wells produced between 500 and 1000 MCF uh, raw gas a day, vertical IP rate. So that proves the helium system works. What we then did is we went out and collected soil gas samples regionally and confirmed that helium was sourcing away from those tests that we knew about, the 8.8, .8, the 8%, and even the lower one down here. Um, we then looked at all the historic well data. We looked at petrophysical analysis and we confirmed that the Lions fairway that model don't prove, the, the reservoir is of excellent quality across this entire area. It's a permeant beach sand. It's very, very, very good quality. And then we wanted to confirm that the seal, because you need a really good seal to hold helium back. So we did that with petrophysics, looking at the densities, and we confirmed the seal's good as well. So that green area is where we believe the play is proven. Um, and obviously you can see how that guided our leasing. Uh, majority of our leases are inside this proven play fairway. And there's the prospects again, Enterprise, Galileo, Argo, Galactica, and, and Pegasus. On the outskirts to the right, um, we have where we've colored it orange. Um, we do think there's an increased risk of CO2 and we're aware of that and um, we, we lease carefully in there. Um, and to the left, you can see an increased seal risk. So we, we don't really want to play down there. It's, we believe the seal is getting a lower quality, but it's also getting much deeper as it you know, tilts into the Rattan Basin towards the Rockies as well. So we want to stay away from that. This is just a, a quick slide just to show again how attractive um, the model dome um, helium concentration is. So you can see it there on the far left at 8%. And on the left of that slide, you can see that's where the pure plays are. That's where the primary helium production is. And as you head to the right, that's the primarily hydrocarbon play um, fields over there. And you can see how low their grade is. And a lot of our peers play somewhere in this middle ground, this sort of 1%, especially the guys up in Canada. Um, and they've got a mixture of hydrocarbons and, um, and, and helium that they, they need to deal with. But again, very globally attractive, um, the average helium at, at Model Dome. So we've got, the, the company has a substantial prospective resource, 13.4 BCF, and that's only over five of the prospects. And we talked about you know, some other ones that are, are forming up on the lease map there. Um, again, shallow depths um, to, to test these wells, 1,000 to 1,200 feet. It's conventional drilling. It's very simple, very small rigs. Um, Three hundred thousand dollars per well for a dry hole cost, and an incredibly attractive gas, raw gas composition. We're mostly helium and nitrogen with a little bit of, of CO two. So, underneath the proven Lions helium play, um, we have some deeper play concepts that we, we, you know, we wanted to talk about. So, Catherine Mock, like we said, tested two point two percent in the deeper Pennsylvania play. So that's a, that's already tested in a deeper deeper reservoir level. We then have the Los Animas formation, which is a very unique formation. It infills basement. Um, and we believe that it has the potential to hold additional source, uh, helium source and reservoirs and seals. And a number of our wells in this area have penetrated that formation. So we're, we're currently evaluating that. We have the potential for fractured basement plays as well. Obviously, helium, as you probably know, is from the radiogenic decay of uh, uranium and thorium in the basement. This area has an incredibly rich basement. Um, there's, there's, you know, uranium anomalies on the surface as well. Um, if we can get that basement fractured where we believe it is, we've, got, we've done significant studies on the gravity and magnetics, we can seal over the top of that, then we'll, we'll have a good helium concentration. And this is, this is for later testing after the Lions play fairway, but um, it's exciting to know. And it's, we're calling them play concepts here because we're still evaluating them and we only have a few well penetrations, but it's just worth noting that similar age plays actually are proven in the Anadarko Basin to the southeast and to the, uh, on the Los Animas Arch, they're helium bearing um, just to the north of us. The helium arch, actually, uh, sorry, the um, Los Animas Arch comes down here and actually starts entering the sort of top corner of this map. So just a cross section here, we won't get too geological on it, but you can see this one runs from the model dome field. So that's the analog with 8% helium in that reservoir, the Lions Reservoir, sealed by the Blaine Formation shown there in purple. It heads across our prospects, Galileo and Enterprise. And we took soil samples across these prospects so we're, and we saw significant anomalies on the ground. So we know helium's charging the area. The offset wells again provided uh, good reservoir quality um, evidence and good sealing evidence. So, 
What it's really about is, is confirming these structures. And the way we, we've looked at the structures in this area is we've used basement, uh, sorry, uh, gravity and magnetics. We've had that reprocessed. We've actually had it reprocessed by two different groups. We use surface mapping because obviously when a field's called model dome, it was originally found by a dome on the surface. So the surface can help us here find these, find these prospects. We tie all that together with the wells that are there and um, come up with these maps. We have almost no, or actually no seismic in this area. So because we wanted to avoid hydrocarbons, we don't have a history of, of oil and gas exploration, but the targets are shallow. We know the surface helps with the expression and we've done a lot of work on the gravity mag. So um, looking at the sort of deeper plays quickly. So this sort of area here where my cursor is moving um, would, be what, would be where the Pennsylvanian play shown by Catherine Mock would be somewhere in this area at about you know, 2,000 sort of feet depth, um, you know, sub the ground level. Then you've got Los Animas formation, um, which I'm showing here. And again, we believe that's got potential source reservoir and seal. Um, we've got some granite wash. We've got some good sort of metamorphose shales in there as well. And then potentially fractured basement plays. And that's the ultimate source of, of this helium. So if we can fracture that and seal it, we're gonna hopefully find enriched um, helium there. This second cross-section actually goes from the Cynthia True Well, that, which is the one that tested at 8.8% helium. And then it runs across our prospects, Argo, Galactica, and Pegasus. And it's just worth noting that Cynthia True, Haskins, Denton, and Colorado all sit on one regional high. And that high obviously has tested 8.8% helium at the Cynthia True Well. Now these blue stars that you can see on the, um, on the, on the cross-section here represents where we've interpreted gas to already exist in the lines. So at the Haskins well, that's from an old report and a lithological log, that well actually was drilled in 1927. Um, so there's, there's written up indications of gas in the lines there. But at Denton and Colorado, and just in the top of the lines at the state well, our petrophysicist has gone back and looked at the old logs and he's interpreted gas columns in all three of those wells. Now, those wells weren't targeting the lines. They were targeting these deeper Mississippian and Arbuckle plays. Um, so they blasted straight through the lines and, and tried to test deeper formation. So, you know, for us to be able to go back and look at those logs and say, hey, there's gas here that they weren't interested in, um, super exciting for us. We, you know, we really, we wrote, you can see why we really like these prospects. Um, and they're on a regional high, which is already tested helium. I should say that none of these wells tested gas from the lines. Uh, it wasn't what they were interested in. So it's, it is log interpretation, but it's on a high, which has already tested um, helium in the uh, Cynthia True well. So very exciting. The um, similar plays, fractured basement, less animals formation exists in this area as well. And the Haskins well is one of the key wells that penetrated that formation. So we've done a lot of work on the, on the play and finding the prospects and, and working that up. So now it's time to accelerate that portfolio with a maiden drilling program and upon success, a high return uh, commercialization pathway. So what's that gonna look like? We have a water well program underway at the moment. Um, we're funding water wells for some local ranches. And in the process, we'll be testing our mud logging, our well site geology, our continuous mass spectrometry gas and our wildlife logging. Um, in those wells. So we're testing, essentially shaking down, testing the services we want to use on the real helium wells. Um, so prior to doing that, and you know, that's, it's just a great way to test all those services, see who we like to work with and see what problems we're going to have, if any. Um, obviously, by doing that, we're going to gather data during these wells. Um, and that data is obviously going to help, uh, help us future, you know, in future define the prospects a little bit better. Um, they will, at the very least, provide incredible stratigraphic information. Like I said, not having the history of the oil and gas ex um, exploration here, we only have a few wells um, and no seismic, so that, that data is going to be super valuable. While we're out there, we're going to test um, existing water wells for helium and other gases as well. Um, anywhere where we can get access to a, a hole in the ground, we will test it for helium and um, build that into our geologic model. So then that will lead on to our helium wells. Um, and we're on track with Enterprise um, to be approved in you know, Q4 2021. And that will, that will allow us to drill that you know, at that time if we choose to do that. Um, applications for a further four wells have been put in um, for the overly galactica and Pegasus uh, prospects. They've been initiated. 
And um, we've got a bunch of other prospects in the pipeline. They're at the sort of stage of, you know, site selection um, and they're part of the sort of early sort of development plan they've done. What that'll do is that'll get us onto a rolling sort of permitting strategy. So we should be able to see, you know, from next year on continual drilling and a lot of flexibility on well results. So uh, the plan is to really have three or four wells to choose from on the result of any other single well. So uh, a lot of flexibility, because we do have to remember this is an exploration play. So that flexibility is, is gonna be important. So upon success, um, like we've said before, high return commercialization pathway, it's gonna be scale, scalable, it's very modular. The first well could be converted to a producer. We could drill four more wells as a concept. That would be about 2.5 million in CapEx. That would feed into a modular plant and we could, we could size that at about 2.5 million cubic feet of gas a day, that's raw gas capacity. And that should output about 50 million cubic feet of um, helium at about 98% um, per year. That would be sold at the plant gate. Off-takers would either take that for liquefaction or they would use the gas as it is, depending on, on what they want to do. That would be about a 10 to 15 million capex. Um, and then with further development of an existing field or exploration success on another prospect and development of that, we could simply add modules to this to this processing facility. And those modules would be about um, 1.5 to 1.6 times the original one to, to sort of add on. Um, and a five world development like that would target about 0.25, so a quarter of a BCF of helium. So just looking at the, at the timeline, Q3 is essentially done. Uh, the well, you know, we've, we said the well permit for enterprise past completeness, like we put an announcement out today actually, that said there's been no petitions against the well. Uh, so it's now moved into hearing phase. So that's definitely on track. We've initiated the permits on um, wells two to five. We've completed our helium marketing study, our high level engineering study and our preliminary development plan. And a lot of that was fed into the slides that you've previously seen. So Q4, um, I think we're on track for enterprise to be approved. We could drill that well then. Uh, we'll be initiating permits uh, for wells six through 10. The water well program will be well underway. Um, Q1 2022 will definitely drill, you know, wells two and three. Development engineering study will be complete. Water wells will continue. That'll see wells four and eight in Q2. Um, a defined commercialization route and a short list of off takers. And then Q3 is really where you can see actually pretty much from the start of next year, the continuous drilling program, but we'll be drilling wells nine, 10 and, and on. And depending on the composition that we confirm in any discovery, um, we could see the commissioning of a stage one production facility, the first module, for example, late in Q4 2022, um, if not early 2023. Just the last slide here, um, or second to last slide, is the just a, a peer comparison. So Blue Star on the left and a lot of our North American peers across, across the table there and, and a couple of the ASX players that have um, some helium interest as well. I won't go into a lot of detail. Um, you can read it and, and have a look through, but really all I wanna say is based on helium grade, based on the leased acreage um, that we have and based on the market cap, I think the investment justification for Blue Star is, is pretty obvious. And again, just to, just to finish, um, that's the same slide we started with. So, you know, helium is a critical technology enabler. We have a huge, large, you know, strategic US land position, um, high grade green resource, low cost, high impact drilling program, and a high return uh, commercialization pathway upon success. 